Good morning, afternoon, evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Honors Geometry class. Today we're going to wrap up our areas chapter. We've seen a lot of uh, really powerful formulas for area, and today we're going to wrap it up with circles. Please, please, please be aware that all of this, every single lesson that we've learned this chapter will be used in chapter 12 as well. So you cannot just disregard this. You know how geometry builds on itself. So let's just get right to it. Today we're going to learn about areas of circles, sectors, and segments. The good news, we've already talked about area of a circle before. We've already talked about areas of sectors before. The only new thing we have to do today is learn about areas of segments. So the area of a circle, hopefully you all remember, is area equals pi r squared. And you know what the R stands for. It is the radius, of course. So it should be pretty simple. Arc length. Arc length, if you remember, it's not the same as arc measure. We had a, a lesson on this as well. Arc measure is equal to the central angle. Or you can have the inscribed angle or the exterior angle. We learned chord, chord. We learned a lot of, way to f a lot of ways to find the arc measure. Arc length, if you remember, is the central angle over 360 times the circumference of the circle because basically it is a percentage of the circle that's what arc length is arc length okay we're going to need that so central angle or arc measure okay it could be either or sometimes they give you the central angle but it could be or arc measure Remember, arc measure is in degrees, okay? Over 360 times 2 pi r, which is circumference. Sector area. Sector area, I like to, to think about it as basically the area of one slice of a pie or one slice of pizza. Basically, it's one triangular, not really triangular because it's got a curve. It's a slice of pie. That's the best way to look at it. You can see it right there, clear and red. This guy right here, this is called a sector of the circle. And it's quite simple. It's the central angle times pi r squared. Believe it or not, we've already seen this formula. We worked with it very briefly when we were talking about arcs. If you remember, I said, guys, I'm going above and beyond here in this lesson, and I'm teaching you sector area. For those of you that remember, awesome. For those of you that don't, no worries, because we're going to learn it again today. And again, central angle, or they could give you the arc measure, gentlemen. Either way. Okay? That's my sector area. What is the area of that one particular, quote, unquote, slice of pie? And then segment of a circle area. Not to be confused with just a regular segment. Segment of a circle. This is the area of a chord and its intercepted arc. What's marked here in red here, guys. Okay, That part right there is called the segment of a circle. Okay, And it's quite simple as well. It's the central angle over 360 times pi r squared, or in other words, the sector area minus the triangle area. So you take the whole entire sector area and you subtract out this triangle. And that's literally it for today. We're going to practice, of course. But that's literally it. Those are our formulas to wrap up this chapter. Now, when we're, when we're going over the triangle area, remember, guys, we're going to have to use our 30, 60, 90 sometimes, our 45, 45, 90 sometimes, or we're going to have to use our Sokotoa. Okay, our sine, tangent, and cosine. 
to find that magical opossum. Okay? Or height. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so find the area of this circle. This should be pretty simple. The radius is 5. So my area equals pi r squared. So that's 25 pi units squared. Being that you guys have calculators, if I asked you for the actual value, you know, round it to the hundredths, then you would go 25 times the pi symbol in your calculator. Yes, sir. No, I did not. No, I did not. But let me get to example two, please. Let's not jump the gun here. But thank you, sir, for caring. Find the circumference of the circle whose radius is 49 pi. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mr. Morrow, that is, that is wrong. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll correct that. Yes, and it is area because radius cannot be square units. So, again, thank you so much. What I am looking for here is the radius, though. That's where my mind kind of messed up. And, again, I apologize. No excuses. Remember that area equals pi r squared. So 49 pi is my area, which equals pi r squared. Divide by pi. Cancel out. 49 equals r squared. I eliminate a power of 2 by square rooting. So r equals plus or minus 7, but you cannot have a negative radius. So radius is 7. Now find my circumference, which is 2 pi r, which is 14 pi units. So it's just working backwards there. Just working backwards. Thanks again, son. So far, so good, right? Pretty simple. Okay, good stuff. Find the area of a sector with a radius of 12 and a 45-degree arc. Okay, let's think about this, guys. Sometimes, not sometimes, but for the most part, drawing things out in geometry makes your life a lot easier. Have a radius here of 12. Okay, awesome. 12. My arc measure is 45 degrees. So that means my central angle is 45 degrees, right? I want to find the area of this whole entire sector. Well, sector area, and I shouldn't put SA because that's going to be surface area later. The area of the sector is equal to central angle or arc measure over 360. So 45 over 360 times pi r squared. So 144 pi. And this is why we have calculators. Even though you don't really... Go ahead, sir. So yeah, this is going to be 45 times 144 divided by 360, which equals 18 pi units squared. If I ask you to round, then you would multiply that, not by 3.14. When we're in geometry, real geometry like this, advanced geometry, you use the pi symbol. It's more exact. So this would roughly be 56.548, so let's say 55 units squared. But for the most part, unless I tell you, you may leave it in terms of pi. You may leave it in terms of pi. Okay? You with me here, my brothers? Not that bad, right? Okay, I see some of you writing. I'll let you finish up. You with me here, boys? Yes. Hi. Next, the radius of a circle is 10. And the arc, sorry about that, and arc AB is 90 degrees. Find the area of the segment. Okay. Again, drawing would really help, in my opinion. You have a radius of 10. 
my arc measure is 90. What's my central angle? 90. 90. Okay. I want to find this area right here. Okay. So to find that area, it's going to be sector area minus the triangle area. So let's first find our sector area. And our sector area will equal central angle or arc measure 90 over 360 times pi r squared, which is 100 pi. Okay? This becomes 1 fourth, 1 fourth times 100. So my sector area equals 25 pi. Does everyone see that? Okay. Now let's try to find the area of the triangle. Thank you, my brother. Okay, in this particular case here, all right, I'm going to cut this to create an apothem. Very good. That's 45, right? With me here, guys? So if the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 is 10, how do I find my side? You multiply by square root of 2 over 2, which is 5 square root of 2. Thank you. So that's 5 square root of 2. That's 5 square root of 2 because the apothem is, uh, or that height, it's not really an apothem unless it's a, it's a regular, an equilateral triangle, which it is not. Um, see what I was talking about yesterday? They're not always equilateral triangles. So in this case, it's just the altitude, but it is a perpendicular bisector because these two guys are congruent. All right? So what is my area of the triangle? Area equals base. 10 square root of 2 times height, which is also 5 square root of 2, divided by 2. So that goes to 5. So that's 25 times square root of 2, which is 50. So my triangle area is 50. And my answer to this, to this question will be 25 pi minus 50 units squared. If I wanted to find an actual number there, it's 25 times pi minus 50, which would roughly equal estimated to be 28.54 units squared. And that is the area of my segment. Does that make sense, gentlemen? You promise. Okay, now, I have had comments where sometimes the homework is easier. I mean, is the lesson is easier than the homework. So let me give you the most difficult type that I could even possibly think of, okay? Let's say you have a circle. And I'm not doing this out of sarcasm. I'm responding to my students. So thank you for telling me that. Okay. Let's say I have this circle, and I tell you that the radius, I don't know, we'll just say it's 8. And we say that the arc here is 70 degrees. Okay. We're not going to be using, you know, we're not going to be able to use a 30, 60, 90 here. All right. We're going to have to use trig. I want to find this sector area. I'm sorry, the segment area. Well, segment area equals sector area minus triangle area. So let's go ahead and first find the sector area. And the sector area in this case will be central angle, which is 70 over 360 times pi r squared, which is 64 pi. That can cancel. Um, and that's going to be pretty nasty. So that's good. That's what I wanted. 7 times 64 divided by 36. Go ahead. Okay, this is 12.4 repeating. We'll just round to 12.4 pi. That's my sector area. That's the area of this whole entire thing. 
right? Now I need to find the area of my triangle. Okay, cool beans, no worries. I know this whole entire central angle is 70. I'm going to drop my altitude here. Again, it will not technically be an apothem because apothems only exist in, in uh, regular polygons. But I am going to drop it out to which is the perpendicular bisector. So now this is 35. Okay? And now uh, this is 8. I need to find both my height. We'll call this height. And I need to find my base. Okay? So I'm going to use Sokotoa, but which one? Who do you want to solve for first, base or height? Base? Okay. Let's solve for the base. Yes, sir. It is a perpendicular bisector because the radii are congruent. So yes, it is a perpendicular bisector by the law, of, by the theorem perpendicular bisector. It's only going to be a perpendicular bisector, though, if you have an isosceles triangle. Thank you, though, sir, for caring. Okay, so I'm going to use sine opposite of hypotenuse. So the sine of 35 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse of 8. I multiply 8 to both sides, so my base will equal 8 times the sine of 35. What is it, my man? 4.58. Let's go ahead and round it to 4.6. That's my base of this guy. But what's the total entire base of the triangle? Why don't you add that, guys? Add them together, so times 2. So that would be 9.2. So that's my triangle base. Now let's find my height. My height right here. So my height would equal, who am I going to use now? I would not use tangent. Because if you use tangent, what if you had screwed up on your base and you screwed up on everything? So let's use cosine. The cosine of 35 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply by 8. And my height would be 8 times cosine of 35, which equals, let's round it, 6.6. .6. So now, what is my triangle area? Well, it's going to be base of 9.2 times height of 6.6 .6 divided by 2. So 6.6 .6 times 9.2 divided by 2, which will equal 30.2. 36. So my sector, my segment area will equal my sector area minus my triangle area, and you are done. If you want an exact value, 12.4 times pi. Hold on, I messed up. 12.4 times pi minus 30.36 roughly equals 8.6 units squared. That's the most difficult it can get. Sir. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you had a good lesson. Hope you learned a lot and have a great day. Bye-bye. What's up?